Hello, dear Rocket fans. Welcome to another episode of Station Years News. It's 2025, December the 2nd. We once again have a colorful mix of topics, one of which will be orbital stations, how to get into orbit and how to toy around with that already right now, even though the crew module isn't yet released. But let's first zap through some other topics, which are less complicated to digest. For example, inventory space. I don't know how final this is, but the hard suit backpack, which I don't know how many of you ever made, since you can't fly around with it, may now become more relevant for two reasons. One, the harm suit doesn't support you carrying a jetpack. It's too heavy, but you can still carry a backpack. And two, it has 12 inventory slots, right? Uh, no, now it has 20. What's an upgrade? The 12 are only 60% of the space we have now. Now you might think, great, so if I make my deep miner outposts, I can now flip the lever of my silo and let things pile up and have to pick them up manually into 20 instead of 12 slots. Sure, that's better, I guess. But no, there's more. Not only could you have done this, letting a Larry arm pack your stuff into lockers automatically and then using the relatively new key combination to drag all of that into your inventory, but also the unpacker, which just gives you all the individual items from a container and the container, will now finally get its counterpart. So to complement the unpacker, we're now getting the packer, which is used for filling cardboard boxes. Sounds a bit as if the developers primarily have trading in mind with this, since they were also working on some changes to trading at the time. But maybe it can also be used to make this here more elegant. So, some other news. The battery charger. Maybe you remember it. You click on print and oops, the room is full. Because they print so fast, now they print more slowly. But also, they're more expensive. So far, they took 10 iron, 5 gold, 5 copper and printed in 1 second. Now they take 10 steel, 5 electrum and 5 copper and print in 10 seconds. So just like that, the self-evident seeming device that's used all over the place has become kind of a luxury. Then again, it's not a game changer that we're now stuck with printing small battery chargers until we've reached the early mid-game stage. We often can't see into closet-like objects in Stationeers due to its way too intense shadows. Maybe that's why the developers just put a light into the large fridge. Locker lights when? The silos can no longer be destroyed by fire, which is in line with other shoot devices. Ladders too, big hunks of iron, can no longer be destroyed by fire. The french fries are more expensive now. Not one potato, five oil and the microwave, but three potatoes, five oil and the furnace. No, I'm kidding, it's, it's the microwave. Astroloy sheets. They needed three astroloy, so that was pretty expensive. Now they need one, but also two steel. We have a new inline tank. You know, the things that you get from the kit pipe utility. The most important thing, of course, is the canister storage device. But as experienced stationers know, it also has the inline tanks and they're important because they allow you to store a lot of gas just in a pipe network instead of having an actual tank, which would exchange with its connected networks only once per game tick. But if you really want to be fast, you want to keep it all in the same pipe network. So you want to increase its volume. So that's what we have these inline tanks for. For liquid and for gas. Insulated and non-insulated. The small one with 100 liters, the bigger one with 250 liters and now one that needs three kits that has 360 liters. There may be some disappointment here that it's not even bigger but when we're looking at the geometry maybe the volume checks out. They have been added for all four variants. Gas liquid, insulated, non-insulated. You're probably thinking these are all flat walls right? But no. These are flat walls. That is just a steel frame. Steel frames now have a fourth build state. If you're thinking sensational, wait a second. Look here, this is sensational. Cable, heavy cable, super heavy cable. These cables are new and can transport up to 500 kilowatts, for which we also have a fuse. In addition to the 100, 50 kilowatts, 5 kilowatts and 1 kilowatts fuse. The good old data disk. Oh, where is the disk slot? Well, we no longer need the disk. The consoles now have a screw. The LEDs will now adapt their text orientation to their build orientation. It's a bit hard to see here in this example. 
Just look at the diagonal line in the zero. It's the same. Sadly though, they still cannot be spray painted. You would have to do that before you put the consoles up on the wall, because these are from the kit console, as you know. The occupancy sensor has been vastly improved. It now has a stack. The stack tells you who is the occupant and what do they have with them. So, in case you don't want to build a rocket to get into orbit, there's an alternative way. Just build a ridiculous amount of pressure. Six megapascals, six gigapascals, oh, that's enough. And we in orbit. Maybe you're observing that the Y coordinate is not changing. We are not falling. We have arrived in orbit and we'd be pulled elastically to this place once we're close enough. So once we're up here, we can happily start building. Yes, orbital stations are now a thing. Maybe you can see that I'm being pulled back elastically because I'm out of bounds. But I have lots of space over here. The launch mount now also exists for the orbit. That's not this one. It isn't yet freely available on beta. It is still hidden in the kit debug. When we're building rockets and we want to replace a fuselage, we no longer have to tediously do that by deconstructing the rocket. Instead we can just hold the angle grinder in the other hand, like the tooltip says. This is the crew module. And this is the crew umbilical. For us to go into orbit. It cannot yet be built legitimately, we would have to use the kit debug for it. And here is the launch mount orbital. There's a seat hidden inside, or at least a place for one. And there's the control screen. to go into space then. Sadly the crew module is really not done yet, it just stays here. There's in fact a bunch more stuff, like the cheese wedge, the composite door light expressing whether it's locked, these construction cones, channelizers and portable barriers, the body bag, the fact that you don't just respawn but drop in with a capsule and that even on station near difficulty you will not be naked, you will get the emergency suit, more details in the stationpedia, the gas sensor showing the total molds, the large cardboard box and that the boxes can be spray painted, lots of little things change around traders, a bunch new starting locations on Vulcan and that in addition to ash storms, we now also have solar storms in that place. That the gas sensor can measure the liquid volume. That the plant lights now have a different center which may be important for already built greenhouses. The shower handle tooltip being more informative. That we may be getting a landing pad center 2x2. Two two. I'm showing you none of these things for two reasons. One, Christmas is around the corner, so you can bet your ass that the next public update isn't far away. And two, and this is really the main reason, I'm sorry but I really do feel under the weather these days, so that's why I resorted to this minimum effort approach at some point in the video. Well that's just the way it is, it'll pass, it's just the timing was a bit unfortunate. See you again next time.